Coastal Processes or Coastal Erosion, Chapter 11. The coastal erosion or the erosion is one of the Earth's major external processes. This is the case history on the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. The beach erosion threatens the historic Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. You can see picture in your textbook and I will have a picture in next slide as well. So 0.5 km from the sea when constructed in late 19th century on only 100 meter away from the sea in 1990s. Much debatable over three options. The US Army Corps of Engineers originally proposed to protect the lighthouse by constructing a 5.6 billion sea wall around the base do nothing and eventually lose the lighthouse and thus an important bit of American history. Move the lighthouse inland. Many local people oppose this plan, fearing the lighthouse would collapse if moved. Much decision, argument and controversy over what to do. In 1999, the National Park Service moved the lighthouse inland approximately 500 meter from the eastern shore of Hatteras Island. The lighthouse was moved 500 meters further inland at a cost of 12 million. Another lighthouse battle is looming on the east coast, the famous Montauk Lighthouse. So it's the picture, if, as you can see, the lighthouse before move, right here in the A, and in picture B it has been removed during the summer. dynamic coastal environment that is convergent zone of continental and oceanic processes this is where we talked about the transitional depositional environment where you're going to see a lot of sediments depositioning in between the continent and the oceanic system so where you're dumping the sediments for example deltoic regions or lagoons or estuaries these are the places you consider as the coastal environment where you can see the the convergence between the continent and the ocean. This varied topography, climate and vegetation, more than 50% of world population concentrated in the coastal zones. Long shoreline, nearly 75% of US population living in coast, coastal states. If you think about this, more coastal areas in western US or eastern US, you can see those cities or those states are highly populated. Largest cities in coastal zones, coastal hazard problems compounded by increased human activities. When you have, when you say more people, when you have more people, you're building up more and more structures with the needs. So that can cause a lot of coastal hazards. Tropical cyclones and other severe storms are considered as the coastal hazards and also marine floods and inland floods due to tropical storms, coastal erosion, tsunamis and tidal currents, rip currents. These are some categories that you consider under coastal hazards. Coastal processes, especially waves. Wave. When you think about wave, light wave, sound wave, similarly these currents or coastal waves or sea waves, ocean waves, whatever you refer to. These are formed by winds, magnitude of waves controlled by speed of the wind, the duration of the wind and the fetch of the wind, it's the area or distance blown by winds. Also tsunamis that caused by earthquake or other sea flow moments. The wave and water movement. As you can see in this picture, the waves are moving from the deep marine conditions towards the shallow marine conditions. At deep marine, you have high velocity waves. When it comes to the shoreline area, the velocity decreases and the bathymetry is more shallow level right here and deep levels in the deep ocean area. And if you think about the, the amplitude of the wave or the height of the wave is in here in the deep marine region you have low amplitude or low height in the wave but when it comes to the shoreline it has a high amplitude. So it's basically you're looking at 
the increment of the wave height when move into a shallow water from deep water and also waves are unstable when the wave height is greater than 10% of the wavelength. When waves enter the coastal zone and shallow water, they impinge on the bottom and become steeper. Wave steepness is the ratio of wave height to wavelength. Swell, the wave groups generated by storms far out at sea. As the swell enters shallower water, transformations take place that eventually lead to the waves breaking on the shore. Wave energy is approximately proportional to the square of the wave height. Waves expend energy along coastline. The wave translation means the decrease in wavelength and velocity but increase in wave height, deep water wave energy translating into wave breakers pounding the shore. Similar to other waves, the sea waves, the wave water waves get diff refracted and reflected. So the wave refraction, the bending of waves or the convergence towards the protruding areas and the divergence of waves at the beach or embayment. The long-term effect of greater energy expenditure on protruding areas is that um, you're going to create different landforms, straightening the irregular shoreline, erosion of headlands. So this is going to be some consequences because of this wave refraction. The large waves can strike on rock bodies and shape them out with the time. Beach is a landform consisting of loose materials such as sand or gravel that has accumulated by wave action at the shoreline. The composition of a beach depends on the environment. That means if you have more shallow environment versus deep environment and also velocity of the wave all of these things come to an account when you think about the composition of the beach and also what type of rock or the what type of cliffs near that particular coastal region that define what type of or what color of the sand that you're going to expect from and the composition of the sand. So that's also depend on the environment that you're looking at. Currents. The horizontal movement of a large volume of seawater is known as currents. So the currents occur due to oblique waves, due to differences in water temperature. So the temperature gradients can cause the currents and due to differences in water salinity. So high salinity versus low salinity when waters start mixing up, they, they're forming currents. And also global currents or more local currents, we can discuss about this, especially when you talk about thermohaline circulation, you're talking about the temperature and salinity-driven circulations or temperature and salinity-driven currents. When you think about the, the global great conveyor belt where you're talking about this thermohaline circulation and sometimes it's more local currents like in a lake or a small area even in the ocean so that's considered as the local currents. Littoral currents. Littoral currents and longshore beach drift. What is backwash? Back flow of water and sediments perpendicular to the shore by gravity is called backwash. Net effect means zigzag longshore beach drift is known as the net effect. So the changes of seasonal and weather conditions resulting in changes of beach faces and textures. Rip currents. A series of large waves surging to shore, then the rapid back flow of the piled up water in narrow zones. Up to 200 people killed and 20,000 rescued from rip currents each year. Importance for people to recognize rip currents and to swim parallel to 
the show until out of the rip zone to escape the zad. Transport of sand. A long show current is produced by incoming waves striking the coast at an angle. Very important. The long show current is a stream of water flowing parallel to the show in the surf zone. Longshore sediment transport, the process that transports sand along the beach. Sand is transported along the coast with the longshore current in the surf zone. Transport of sand. So as you can see in this picture, the, the dark, the black arrow is showing the surf zone where longshore sediment transport occurs in longshore currents. You can see the view fronts and line of breakers and the beach right here. And the swatch zone is where you have the zigzag movement, the zigzag path. So when it comes to the transportation of sand, there are two components goes with it. The sand is transported along the coast with longshore current in the surf zone that is denoted by this dark black arrow and up and back movement of beach sand in swatch zone causes the sand to move along the beach in a zigzag path. So it's the second one. So in both ways you're transporting the sediments. Here is another picture that you can see that the longshore currents bringing up the sediments towards the beach. Beach budget. The submarine canyons are the places that you can see sand removal from coastal environments. For example, lone shore transport, sea cliff erosion, rivers add the sand to coastal environments. So the plus signs represent the sand gaining and negative signs represent the sand loss. So long shore transport is a plus. Let's gain the sands and SEF sea cliff erosion is the plus and also the river source that's bringing up the sands to the coastal area and the removal of the sand from the coastal environment is when you have the submarine canyons and here is another picture to show the sand balance sands coming from rivers and they're going to be deep seeded and then with the storm waves and a gravity drift the balance between the storm waves and the gravity drift going to have this relationship between sandbar and the deep sand the sandbar is formed and the small waves and gravity related correlated with the beach and formation of beach and the beaches with the wind action the forming dunes and then the storm waves bring these dunes back to sandbar likewise so this is a cyclic process and this is showing the balance between offshore and onshore sand transportation and the sand balance coastal erosion this is one of the biggest national and global issue as you can see this cliff or this is get eroded and all sands get into the ocean and as you can see these they were the places people used to use this road and even houses you can see it is a big issue that you do a lot of erosion but less deposition so this is a big um, big problem that we need to address in environmental geology class especially. So coastal erosion, the factors of erosion is constant wave actions, tropical cyclones, tsunamis, tidal actions, long-term rise of sea level and human activities. As you can see in this picture, some uh, constructions can lose the ground and with the wave action, this ground is easily eroded and this sand is reaching 
to the ocean. See cliff erosion, the wave erosions and land erosion processes, so landslide, mud flow, runoff, this all based on wave and they get eroded. Human activities promoting sleek cliff erosion, also urbanization, like I mentioned, building up these structures along the edge, like pools or patios, and the irrigation and other activities also uh, weak in the land. The hazard reduction, the reducing runoff, plant development and activities. Measuring coastal changes. The remote sensing method of measuring and monitoring changes in the coastal environment. LIDAR, the light detection and ranging technology measures several thousand elevation measurements per second with vertical resolution of better than 15 centimeter, like six inches. Once a baseline set of elevations is recorded, subsequent flights can detect changes in the coastal zone. This is a picture LIDAR image where you can see the elevations. This orange color is high elevation, 15 meter, and the blue line is the, not zero, but minus two, that like two meter depth, the blue line. So LIDAR technology can be used to measure the changes in the coastal range. Engineering structure. The common structures like sea walls, groins, breakwaters and jetties, you can build up these structures in order to prevent the coastal erosion. And this improve navigation and retard erosion, uh, recreational beach expansion. But the problems will be interference with longshore currents causing unintended adjacent local erosion and deposition, so that can still be a problem and soft stabilizations like beach nourishments, the alternative to coastal engineering structures, constructing a positive beach sand budget, and like a successful case is Miami Beach, Florida, 1970s, 1980s, is 200 meter wide beach, survived major hurricanes in 1979 and 1992. The project cost approximately $62 million over 10 years, the foreign tourists Tourism alone brings about nearly $2 billion per year, over 650 times the cost of the nourishment. So that's worth. Not all the projects are successful. Some unsuccessful projects are there as well. The human activity and coastal erosion, like Atlantic Coast is barrier islands from Florida to New York. One example is Ocean City, Maryland. You can see that right here. And the last hundred years, coastal erosion along Texas coast accelerated by 30 to 40 percent. The coastal erosions along the Gulf of Mexico due to land subsidence from the groundwater withdrawal and petroleum exploration, the reduction of sand supply from the damming of rivers, the gradual rise of sea level due to global warming and also the Great Lakes, the periodic problems along the coast of the Great Lakes, and also fluctuations of lake water level, lack of natural frontal dunes, erosions more severe along Lake Michigan shoreline, increased slope stability due to groundwater seepage. So the tropical cyclones, they're known as typhoons in most of the Pacific Ocean and hurricanes in Atlantic, strong winds, hundreds MP edge winds damaging structures, power lines and trees, large areas diameter up to 600 kilometers and 100 miles into inland. So intense precipitation, marine floods and inland floods can occur. So annual average possibly uh, impact from five hurricanes along Atlantic coast. So these are the hurricane paths. Largely affected by past experience, proximity to coast, and probability of suffering damages are the perspectives of the, this uh, coastal erosion. And the adjustments would be better protective structures, better land use zoning, better coastal mitigation planning, and emergency management like preparation, evacuation, and warning post storm management procedures. So that will help to the public. And there are five general principles, coastal erosion, shoreline construction, 
causes changes and stabilization of coastal zone, engineering structures, and uh, structural versus non-structural alternatives to coastal erosion problems. So these are the major principles that you need to read through and understand. If you have any questions, um, let me know. And these are some critical thinking topics for you to understand the chapter well. And that's all for today.